All right, so the recording has started, so we can uh, now begin. Shall we just look to the Lord once again? And then we will continue. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we take time to study on the next subject, uh, Lord, we pray you will lead us by the Holy Spirit that, uh, oh God, you would uh, minister, Lord, to each one of our hearts and lives. Lord, you know the areas where uh, we need to uh, grow in you, Father. And so, Lord, we uh, open up our hearts and we ask you, Lord, to speak through your word. We commit this entire time into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So the next topic that we are going to touch on is laying the axe to the root of pride. Okay. So uh, all of these attitudes somewhat seem connected. We said self is uh, self must be uprooted, jealousy must be uprooted, and now we are coming to pride. Okay. So, what is pride? You can describe it in your own words, no problem. What is pride? Feeling superior, okay. Nice. Feeling superior. Okay. Being overconfident. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. Attitude. Having an attitude. Okay. True. Yeah. Having an attitude. Yeah. Boasting. Okay. Boasting about oneself. Correct. That's pride also. Overconfidence, okay, overconfidence. Uh, here, yeah, uh, we have nice answers here as well. Uh, it's saying that, you know, I'm something uh, about ourselves. Mm, we have someone saying abnormal, boasting, and ego. Okay, so that's another term that is used to describe pride. So we want to look at what pride is and uh, how does God look at pride and uh, what are the results of pride. We've been saying that when there is a root, uh, there will be, you know, uh, there, there will be the stem and the leaves which are symptoms or you know they, they are just outside you can see those things or manifestations so we look at some of the manifestations uh, in our own lives how does pride show itself and what to do about it right how to deal with pride so this is what we are going to look at um, in this session so pride uh, simply put we can this we can use many of the terms that uh, came from all of you. Uh, we can also say that it is arrogance, haughtiness, exalting oneself, giving you know importance to oneself, or a lot of self-importance. Uh, that is pride, uh, and it is boasting and glorifying oneself. Okay, that is pride. So where we have um, we have a view of ourselves, which is which is abnormally big. We think, you know, it's it's good to it's good to have, like yesterday, Pastor was saying, healthy self-esteem. But when it becomes unhealthy, when we move from that position and we come to a place of exalting ourselves, boasting about ourselves, glorifying ourselves, then there is a problem because it is no longer healthy. Okay, so that is what pride looks like. Uh, and uh, the Bible also describes that there's something known as the pride of life, the pride of life where, you know, um, there is a pride that comes with, uh, you know, the way uh, one does life. And uh, uh, 
it, it exists in the world apostle john writes about it in john 1 john chapter 2 and verse 16 he lists out a couple of things and he says that they are not from god one of which is pride of life so he says for all that is in this world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world so in uh, the world system you know people take pride uh, in the way they live the things they have uh, and uh, you know their accomplishments way way beyond what is recommended by god's word and uh, so we can see that there is something known as the pride of life that exists out there in the world okay so when here john is saying in the world he is also trying to contrast it with us we who are in christ that's not for us he says it's in the world pride of life uh, but it is not of the father it's not of god and so we must be careful about these things uh, god you know we we see that you know god is so just he's holy and uh, as part of his nature there are some things that god doesn't like and in fact the bible uses strong words that such as hates god hates now if god hates something that that we must really stay away from it isn't it so we must really stay away from it so proverbs chapter 6 verses 16 to 19 they list out six things that god hates and the first one in the list is proud look god hates pride it's an abomination to the lord so what does this mean god hates it means that you know uh i mean obviously it's greater than dislike when we say i i don't like this fine you know maybe it, it's something that displeases you but when we say i hate i hate this that's so strong and we can understand how god feels about pride in our hearts it's an abomination to the lord we may say that you know god loves us isn't it how can god how can god hate us a proud look he hates how can god hate us when he already loves us so let's understand god loves us but he hates pride in our heart okay so that pride is an abomination to the lord and there is another scripture james 4 and verse 6 which says he gives more grace Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Okay, think about this. Now, God resists the proud. Now, we already said God loves us. So, he will not reject us, isn't it? We are trying to go closer to God. How do we go closer to God? How do we fellowship with God? Through his word, through worship. Uh, you know through prayer so we are trying to go closer to god and the scripture says draw near to me and i will draw near to you so we are going closer to god but if there is pride in our hearts right it will not let us go close to god there is something there which is again hindering and it, scripture says god is resisting he's saying i can't take this there's pride in our heart there's pride in our lives and so it's actually creating a distance between God and us. Not because God wants to keep us away, but pride is like that. God resists the proud. God hates a proud look. Okay? So um, we must do everything possible to get rid of pride, the root of pride in our hearts. This verse also says, but gives grace to the humble. What does that mean? You know, everything that we do uh, requires grace. Grace is God's enabling, God's enabling. Let's imagine that, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I finished some work. I wanted to do some work and I finish it and it has come out very well. Okay, I wanted to write an assignment and I did it very well. 
i can say oh you know thank god thank god god helped me he gave me the grace he gave he enabled me or i went to preach i preached well yes i worked hard but at the same time god gave me that grace grace is enabling god is enabling me so instead of saying i did that assignment yeah yeah i knew it i'm so good you know i always do well <laughs> we could say something like that oh yeah i always preach well nothing no not, no uh, you know new news at all i every time i preach well so what's happening here we are not acknowledging god's grace in our lives we are leading worship you know we are doing other things we are organizing uh, and uh, you know engaging in various tasks even in god's house instead of saying okay god gave the grace you know thank god acknowledge that god is there god is strength and he has given the grace if we put ourselves uh, first and we glorify ourselves that is pride that is pride that's not humility and we've seen that god resists the proud he gives grace to the humble so grace is enabling isn't it so every time we need to do something we need god's grace without his grace we cannot do it now god will keep giving grace to the humble so then what happens we are able to do more we are able to do more what do we need to do more we need more grace right so we are doing something today we want to do more tomorrow unless we are walking in humility grace will not come okay so to receive grace we must walk in humility and not in pride when we walk in pride it will cut the supply of grace over our lives so that is something for us to be conscious about i want more grace i want to do more for god i want to do more for the kingdom okay then don't walk in pride because god resists the proud he gives grace to the humble uh, so we want to receive more grace from god to do all that he has called us to do and you know when we consider uh, uh, pride pride is a very subtle thing subtle thing or you know it sort of comes in um, quietly quietly pride can come and sit in our hearts and it also happens that you know when we um, accomplish things or um, uh, you know we we get something done uh, naturally we tend to do that we tend to uh feel like oh yeah i did it now think about people like moses how proud should he have been okay moses he he had an exceptional uh you know a resume like i i led thousands of people we crossed the red sea if you got a, a resume like that would you give that guy a job of course you'd be like wow what what have you done amazing you led so many people and you took care of them you know you let them out of egypt but the bible also says he was very humble he was a very humble man the bible says that about him okay so it's possible to do a lot for the kingdom and yet walk in humility doesn't mean that you know one can one should be puffed up with pride because of all that god is doing um, in and through them okay so we see that example if moses could be called as a humble man you know all of us can walk that same path and be humble no matter how how many big things god does uh, through us and, and so we can always keep checking our attitude oh pride should not creep in quietly and settle into our hearts now how does pride look what are the manifestations of pride we have um, you know a long list here uh, how pride shows up so uh, we'll do our best to cover as much as possible i'm on page 42 uh, in our printed notes all right so the first manifestation is being obstinate or being stubborn okay stubborn what does this mean uh you see stubborn means uh, being very firm um regarding a few matters that we are immovable unshakable 
okay about those matters so there are things which we must be stubborn for that are good like uh, you can take for example um, you know daniel and his friends they went to um, uh, babylon and in babylon they were asked to partake of the food of the babylonians and because they had already consecrated themselves to the lord they were stubborn they said no we can't we we will eat what we are eating and then you check and you see how we are doing so they were stubborn for godly things in a good way so that's okay you know that we understand we are immovable for some of the good things and uh, we will not give up but then there are other things where you know god wants us to change where god wants us to correct ourselves and there we are stubborn which uh, you know becomes which angers god or which actually uh, distances us from god so you know there are many examples of um, a people in scripture one of one of them is uh, nebuchadnezzar uh, and uh, in the book of daniel we see how even though he was a, a mighty mighty ruler he was brought down he was brought down why one big reason in his life was pride pride and uh, being stubborn like against god and so he lost everything and he was brought down and so we we must be careful you know, never to get into an attitude of being stubborn now when it comes to um stubbornness for the wrong things okay how does that show itself you know when uh, let's say someone wants to correct us or they give us feedback and they say you know you said this or you did this i don't think that's good uh, sister uh, maybe one person tells us and uh, two people tell us you know if more people are telling us that there, there could be a real problem that you know so many people are noticing and they're actually coming and telling us but how does stubbornness look stubbornness will say no it's not true i don't have anything to change why should i listen to you right we are firm we are firm but on the wrong things where we are not ready to accept what is being spoken into our lives as correction um proverbs 29 verse 1 this is there uh, on page 43 the top of that uh, uh, section page it says he who is often rebuked and hardens his neck will suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy so what what does that mean it means somebody is being corrected but what are they doing harden their neck meaning people are telling and telling and telling but one is not willing to listen right we just become hard we say no i am not going to listen let anybody say whatever they want i am not going to correct myself i will keep doing what i am doing but it leads to destruction we must remember that because we are being obstinate where is this obstinate attitude coming from there is a root of pride within our hearts because we feel we already know what is there for others to tell us okay so that is how stubbornness you know would show itself uh now let's look at the next one here arrogance okay arrogance arrogance or as um, some of us here pointed out overconfidence what is what is that overconfidence means um you know we we judge ourselves mature enough or capable too early too early and then we feel that yeah we can do it now think about uh, you know a son who goes to his father and uh, in every country there is a certain age at which they give you a driving license right but the son is below that age he goes up to the father and he says i want to drive the car and the dad says no you can't drive the car even the government says that you should be this age to drive the car so once your birthday um, you come to that age you come to me we'll work it out you apply for a license and the son says no i don't want to listen to you i know i know how to drive the car and he grabs the keys and he goes driving what will happen what are some possibilities possibility of accidents possibility of 
Ah, uh, being caught by police. Yeah, that's also a possibility, correct. What are the other possibilities? He might hit someone, yeah, injure another person, okay? Yeah? I couldn't hear. Robbed, okay, okay, he may even be robbed. Yeah, the car might be stolen. And there are so many possibilities, right? All dangerous possibilities because he is uh, being arrogant. He thinks he's capable too early, right? Uh, and uh, he, he is disobedient. And so he might put himself in trouble. So arrogance is like that, you know, arrogance makes us feel like we can do it. We can do it uh, and we are ready. Uh, and uh, there is an aggressiveness, there's an aggressiveness that comes with arrogance. Now, when it comes to spiritual things, when it comes to spiritual things, uh, we must be careful. We know that it's good for us to be um, very strong about, um, you know, for example, when we are spiritual and, you know, we, we are praying to God and we're trusting God for certain answers. Um, we are aggressive. We're aggressive about it. But then there can also, we can even, if you're not careful, we can cross that border. And from being ag aggressive in a positive way, we can slip over to the side of being arrogant, right? Spiritual arrogance, where we say, uh, God has to do this. You know, how can we be irreverent towards God without honoring him? You know, he has to, or, or um, uh, you know, the way we, we pray or the way we, we minister, there can be that tint of arrogance in it, okay? We are strong in the word, we are, we are strong in the faith. That's a good thing, we are being aggressive. But if we are not careful, very subtly we can cross over to spiritual arrogance, which is also not a good thing for us to do. But that comes from a place of, pride where we feel you know uh, we are good enough or we are greater and so um, we can speak that way or we can relate that way to God or we can relate that way to people or we can even look down upon others when we feel spiritually arrogant you know we can look at other believers or we can look at other churches and say uh, yeah we are better we know better things are better in our church so we are functioning with a sense of spiritual arrogance okay and uh, that is something for us to be uh, for us to note and deal with it immediately so it can show itself as arrogance and uh, as we've been saying you know one must always walk in humility so how do we how do we kind of overcome this arrogance always uh, be dependent on god like yesterday uh, pastor jay kumar was saying that if we are asked to do something, you know, maybe, maybe we have done that many, many times. We must still demonstrate dependence on God. So we have uh, something called as weekend schools here at um, uh, uh, APC. And I'd been to one weekend school where they were talking about uh, work, you know, how, um, how we must be in the marketplace. Uh, and uh, there was a speaker who was very well accomplished uh, in the IT sector. Okay, and uh, I think now he's abroad also. And he was sharing his life experience. And he, he was saying how he has seen God work in his life. And I was amazed because what he said is there are things which he has done many times. Okay, and it has been successful. But every time uh, his office or his boss asks him to do again, he always prays and he says, Lord, you have to help me. Uh, you have to bless this work. I am depending on you a hundred percent, even though he has done it a thousand times before. Okay. And I thought that's amazing. That's what walking in humility looks like, where we are not depending on ourselves. We're not making ourselves great, but we are saying, God, I always need you. Even if I've done it one million times, I'm doing it, you know, uh, one million and one time. I need you, God. I'm depending on you fully. Right? So that's the kind of attitude where we never say, this is the end. This is the end of my learning. This is the end of my, uh, uh, you know, uh, practice because I've already arrived. That 
would display pride and arrogance instead of that to walk with humility so um, arrogance says that you know i can do it i can even do it without god so that's what arrogance is about now pride may show itself as rebellion rebellion what is rebellion rebellion is uh, to go against uh, unwillingness to submit to god appointed authority um so where do we see this where do we see rebellion in scripture you know, one classic example is saul you know when god sent saul um to war against destroy the amalekites and he tells him you destroy them fully what saul does is he destroys them yes but some of the um you know some things that were remaining like he kept the animals alive and uh, you know only in part he destroyed okay so did he technically obey god god said go destroy the amalekites yes he destroyed but he didn't do it fully so what does it show you know it shows that uh, he was disobedient to god okay and then you know we we find the scripture god speaks and uh, um, sort of rebukes um, saul so in first samuel chapter 15 and verse 23 the scripture says for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because you have rejected the word of the lord he also has rejected you from being king so god got very upset with saul and he lost his position you know some of us said we may lose uh the blessings that god gave us because of our pride what happened to saul he was rebellious and god could see that now we may say he obeyed no something he obeyed but you see partial disobedience is disobedience any disobedience is disobedience we have not completely obeyed and in this case that's what happened yeah he destroyed little bit but then he kept a little bit and god noticed it and what does the scripture say rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry and what did it lead to rejection of saul as king and so you know for us in our lives we must be careful you know are we rebelling against god's instructions are we rebelling against god's authority that he places over our lives what is god appointed authority god appointed authority uh, are you know a government authority governmental authority that we have in our nation and uh, uh, you know our states we have um, uh, people appointed as spiritual leaders in the church we have people appointed as leaders wherever we go you know some of us who are working we may have our boss our manager uh, or those of us who are studying in the college setting you may have um, you know the uh, administrator there and different people overseeing us these are all god appointed authority and there are instructions why are there instructions because we want the system to function correctly but when we rebel we say no if you make the rule i'll break the rule <laughs> you know uh, sometimes people think rules are made to break but that is rebellion and what does god feel about rebellion he hates rebellion stubbornness god doesn't like stubbornness okay so that's an attitude within ourselves that we must look at and even parents parents right are god god's appointed authority and as young people sometimes we feel why should i listen Uh, i know more you know i have more exposure on the internet but they are the god given authority and of course we must obey our parents in the lord right in the lord so uh, we must ensure that we are not walking with rebellion but we are walking um, in obedience to all the authority structures that god has put in our lives uh, now what are some of the other symptoms of pride another symptom can be being scornful 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 means um, you know being uh, disrespectful or putting somebody down or speaking mockingly against uh, someone so 
what we do what we end up doing is we end up uh, making ourselves look better so if someone does the same work as you you may say something like uh, yeah but when i did it for the first time you know i did it so well but look at you you were not even able to do so much so we are constantly mocking them we are mocking them uh, you know at your age it, people should have been like this but look at you you've done nothing so i'm scorning i'm putting somebody down i'm speaking disrespectfully right uh, and that again is coming from that place in my heart where i feel i am better i am great i am good i am perfect okay so scornful being scornful putting somebody down with our words that again is is something to be careful about so don't make derogatory remarks about anyone now the next kind of uh, manifestation is self righteousness self righteousness so there is a parable in luke chapter 18 where we see we see that there are two men who go to the temple to pray there is one who is a pharisee and this is his prayer okay uh, and you you can imagine how god must be feeling to hear this prayer so he says god i thank you that i am not like other men extortioners unjust adulterers or even as this tax collector i fast twice a week i give tithes of all that i possess and the tax collector standing afar off uh, okay so there's another person standing next okay that's a tax collector so we've just heard the prayer of the pharisee he is he is exalting himself and he say god you know i am so wonderful okay i do all these things i wake up early in the morning i do my quiet time i give my tithes i go to church every sunday so we have this big list of all the things that are right with our uh, you know christian walk and we are coming to god on the basis of that and we saying god i am so mighty and wonderful so you answer my prayer okay so that's one way of praying now there is another person tax collector he's uh, praying and uh, you know he prays a humble prayer before the lord and you know we see in that parable where god says look there is self righteousness coming through this pharisee what is self righteousness when we think that we are again you know perfect we are perfect and our systems are perfect and uh, um, you know and god must also appreciate it so that's what we are saying uh, having that attitude of a pharisee where again we look down upon others and uh, you know we are not consider it that they may still be making their journey of learning and growing in the lord so being self righteous is uh, something that um, you know we we must uh, look out for and while being self righteous what we end up doing is we end up judging others we end up end up judging others um not not with the the righteous righteous standards but uh, you know with with our own self made standards and then we find that others are not doing as good but that's coming out of a place of self righteousness we end up judging people so there are uh, various other manifestations uh, the next one is being quarrelsome quarrelsome okay we can easily spark a fight we can easily uh, upset the team we can easily upset the relationships because you know we can fight about anything and everything but where is that coming from it may be coming from pride in our hearts or prejudice prejudice means bias okay what is that bias means that um, you know in our minds uh, we we have uh, a preference we have a preference uh, you know for things and um, we only go by that for example uh let's let's say that i only prefer uh the rich and i don't prefer the poor so when people come into uh you know our church if i say to all the rich, 
rich people i say okay you all please take the front seats okay those those who are uh, not rich okay you take the back seats that's prejudice i have a bias for the rich and i'm trying to prefer them over the poor but we know you know james uh, writes to us and he says don't treat people like that don't discriminate between people on the basis of um, you know their uh, uh, wealth or where they are coming from um, and uh, you know their ethnicity so many things that we know today that we must be we must understand so giving people preference okay uh, based on our, on our own standards is prejudice and many times that also arises from a place of pride in our hearts and we know as believers we should not do that we must uh, we must praise and thank god for everyone because all of us are made in the image of god there is nobody greater or nobody lower uh, you know god did not make us greater and lower than each other uh, and so to bring in any form of discrimination you know, on the basis of our backgrounds uh, that's not good and that's not from god and being very high minded high minded means again you know thinking uh, that we are too great we are thinking too highly of ourselves you now uh, maybe some of you may have seen this image where there is a cat looking into a mirror okay but the cat is seeing itself as a lion okay anyone you have seen that yeah some of us have seen it right so they use that for self esteem to say that oh you should think good about yourself now we know to uh, as far as it's healthy it's good but if there is pride and we're always looking at at ourselves as i'm very great okay then it ends up being a problem we we become very high minded and exclusive where um, we feel like okay i'll live a certain way i'll interact with a certain set of people uh and uh, you know we avoid others and so that uh, is also a result of pride now what can be the results of pride pride will bring shame you know, pride goes before a fall what about the king saul we saw he had pride and god said okay i don't want you to king be the king any more there was a fall a downfall in his life so saul we saw that there was a downfall what about uh, nebuchadnezzar he was a mighty king lost it fall downfall shame is a consequence of pride what about lucifer oh i didn't mention <laughs> i should mention lucifer okay rebellion rebellion in heaven scripture records and what was the result consequence got through him okay go enough there is a downfall and shame follows pride and that would be the result so fall destruction and uh, there's a very dangerous thing that can also happen and that is called as self deception self deception now what is this self deception now self deception simply means that we think we know but we actually don't know okay um if we think we know then we end up making mistakes now if if you take uh, anyone right we call uh, in the medical terms we say quack meaning they they are not trained but um they may end up doing some of the procedures medical procedures don't you think that's dangerous like they don't have the training but they're doing it now if you go and ask a person like that who's very convinced no i know i will do the surgery it's so dangerous you would never let a person like that do the surgery but they believe that they can self deception they've not been trained to do those uh, you know special special things and uh, similarly when it comes to us we just believe that you know we can maybe we've studied a lot of god's word and uh, there is a not lot of knowledge in our minds but we've not yet received 
um, you know, like we've not applied it or we've, we've not really matured with that knowledge in our minds and we get puffed up. And scripture also says knowledge puffeth up. Somewhere we begin to think, yeah, I already know. I already know and uh, I can do it. Even when there is godly counsel around us saying, no, you must wait or you must take time, we jump into things. Uh, so it can lead to self-deception and it's the most dangerous thing. You know, at least if I know I am wrong, it will help me in my life. I can change from that point. But if I am saying I'm not wrong, that is the most dangerous thing. That's the most dangerous thing because it will lead into self-deception where I cannot evaluate myself correctly and I end up making lots of mistakes. So pride leads to, you know, all of this and uh, much, much more. Now, what should we do to overcome? Uh, we've been saying constantly that one must walk in humility, humility or meekness. Why should we walk in humility? Because grace of God will be on our lives. Okay. And um, is meekness, you know, the world will say, if you are meek, if you are humble, you're being foolish. You know, meekness is weakness. But we know Jesus taught us that we must be meek. Right? So we will follow what the word of God says and uh, go through with it and we will see the power of God. So we will not be losers if we are meek. If we just humble ourselves, okay, somebody is saying something and uh, that's not true. Even after you convince them they're not believing it, you say, okay, God, I just leave it in your hands. You will take care. I know. Right? And people around you say, hey, no, fight, man. You should fight. That's what the world says. And you say, no, I've done my part. I've tried to, you know, prove myself, but it's not happening. But I'm trusting God now. I will be meek. I will not take revenge. No, I will do what I need to do. You're walking in meekness. God himself will, you know, uh, uh, come through for us when we are walking in meekness. Now, we can also maintain a um, uh, servant heart. A servant heart is just the way Jesus, what did he do? He washed the feet of his disciples. What is that example for us? If Jesus can wash the feet of his disciples, you know, we must follow that example, right? So we humble ourselves before people, uh, even the people whom we lead, we must humble ourselves. And uh, we continue to keep our dependence on the Lord. We keep submitting to God in all things. We keep submitting to God in all things. We're depending on him, submitting to him and saying, you know, every time God shows us something and he's correcting us in our hearts, in our attitudes, we say, okay, God, I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay. Okay, God, I will change. Right? Okay. I will correct myself. I will humble myself. Many times we can even humble ourselves, repenting before the Lord uh, by fasting, prayer, worship, humbling ourselves. We're saying, Lord, yes, Lord, I, I completely depend on you, right? And then what happens? God's power takes over. His wisdom takes over. His grace takes over. And God is ready to help when we humble ourselves. But when we stand up and say, no, you know, I magnify myself. I know everything. And we're walking in pride. God says, okay, you stay away from me. He resists the proud. And we saw the consequences, downfall, shame, right? Condemnation, so many things follow pride in our lives. And so let's pray and ask the Lord to uproot any pride that we may be carrying. Can we just uh, look to the Lord in prayer? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and uh, for giving us this revelation that we must always be completely dependent on you, O oh God, and not give pride, self-exaltation, boasting, stubbornness, rebellion, 
high minded attitude any place god and uh, father we ask for the help of the holy spirit we pray that you will sanctify us yes lord you are the lord our sanctifier and we we just open up our hearts to you and we pray god that you will help us align our attitudes father god in obedience in submission lord in accordance to the truth of your word and lord we know that uh, as we humble ourselves before you that uh, you are the god who pours out your grace lord um and for that we give you praise we give you thanks in jesus name we pray amen amen man thank you everyone thank you for uh, joining the second session uh we'll go into a break now and then we'll have the third session which uh, pastor selina is going to take which will be laying the axe to the root of lust so she'll deal with the next topic um and uh, yeah so we'll see you all then go ahead for a break thank you uh just uh, an information yeah, for the e learn students for those who are watching uh in case you require help technical help of any kind you may please email support.elearn@apcwo.org and uh, our team will respond so this is an information for the e learners and also the friday session of uh, google classroom training uh, is not a requirement for e learners thereby it will not be recorded and uploaded on the e learning platform so please make a note of this thank you and bye for now